Yolo Box is an extremely small and portable all-in-one live streaming solution that supports multiple cameras and inputs. In this video, I'm going to give you my first impressions of getting up and running with it. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored, but YOLO Live did send this to me to review. Everything in this video is my honest opinion and they don't get any input into what I say in this video. Okay, first I want to give you a quick rundown of the features of this device. Normally I don't do this because it's easy to go look up the details on the website or there's a million other videos about it, but this device is still so new that there isn't too much info about it out yet. So what exactly is this thing? In short, it's a self-contained, all-in-one, touchscreen, live streaming video switcher. It really is an all-in-one package. It's a standalone device. You can plug in video cameras. It can connect to Wi-Fi or even a cellular network. We'll talk more about that later. You can add graphics and titles, and then it can stream directly to YouTube, Facebook, custom RTMP servers, and even more than one at the same time. So what comes in the box? Of course, the YOLO box itself. And under here, we've got a carrying case. We've got two HDMI cables. We've got power cord, USB to USB-C power cord and a charging brick. And a mount for putting this on top of a camera. It is so compact, I can't believe how small it is. The whole front of the device is a touchscreen and monitor. And it's battery powered so you can live stream on the go. It's about as thin as you would want to be. Like, really, it is so thin, just barely bigger than the ports on the sides. I just absolutely love this form factor and the fact that it's an entirely self-contained device. All right, let's start by talking about the inputs and the outputs. There's two HDMI inputs, so that means two cameras or a camera and a computer or an iPad, but there's also a USB port, so you can connect a USB camera to it as well. This is super interesting to me because it means you can use your nice camera with HDMI out and a good lens to get a good close-up shot. And then you can use the USB camera to get a wide shot of the room. Of course, the USB cameras are usually lower quality, so that's something to keep in mind as well. But the nice thing about USB cameras is that they're powered over USB, so you can get a third camera angle without worrying about bringing batteries for that camera or running another power cord. Here's a neat trick though. If you want a third HDMI input instead of using a USB webcam, you can grab one of these little capture cards. I'll leave a link in the description below. And now you've got an extra HDMI port. And this capture card is also powered over USB, so that's all you need. And it just sits right on top. This also has the ability to load graphics and generate titles on the device itself. You can add text layers or load in graphics from an SD card, even add a logo to the stream. You can even load video clips on the SD card and play back pre-recorded videos. There's also an audio input to run audio from an external mixer or music from an iPod or something. So it's a pretty nice set of inputs. Next, moving on to outputs. First, the whole device is a touchscreen monitor. You control and monitor everything from here. That means you don't need to bring a separate monitor because this thing is a monitor. There's also an HDMI output, which is mainly useful if you want a larger view of what's on the screen. There's of course a headphone jack, so you can monitor your audio. And if you pop in an SD card, you can also record your live stream to the card. Then there's the streaming output. From this device, you can connect YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or even custom RTMP endpoints and stream to one or more of them at the same time. You can also either stream at 1080, 720, or 540. And that takes us to network connectivity. This thing has multiple ways it can get onto the internet. There's an ethernet port to plug in a wired connection, which if you do have a wired connection, that's gonna be the best available. So use that if you can, but it can also connect to Wi-Fi if you don't have a wired connection nearby. But also, and this is what really surprised me, you can pop in a SIM card and live stream on a cellular connection. I was able to take the SIM card out of my phone, pop it into this box and live stream to YouTube. By the way, if you need a good cell plan for this kind of thing, I can definitely recommend Mint Mobile. I've been using them for years. They didn't sponsor this, I just really like them. And if you use the link below, you get $15 off your first month and you also save me a bit on my next phone bill. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the features of this. Let's talk about the price and who I think this is good for. This retails for $1,100, which may sound expensive, but let's take a look at other devices around the same price range. So the Sling Studio is a similar self-contained switcher that also has built-in Wi-Fi. It's $1,000 for the main hub, but the only way to connect multiple cameras is wirelessly, and each camera you add, you have to buy a $300 transmitter. Plus, 
There's no screen, so you also have to have an iPad to control it. So that brings the cost closer to $2,000 in order to have a complete setup, not including cameras, of course. There's also the one I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, the A10 Stream Live, which is about $1,000. And it's actually a kind of similar level of functionality, about the same number of inputs. But that one, of course, is a lot larger and not battery powered. And you also still need an iPad to use as a controller for it. Of course, there's also the Roland V1 HD for $1,000, but that's just a switcher and you need to use an external streaming encoder and a monitor. There's the Blackmagic Television Studio HD for $1,000, which also doesn't include a live streaming encoder. And there's, of course, my favorite, the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, which is pretty portable and compact also, but it's not really designed to be powered from a battery. And you still need to add a monitor to see what you're doing. Plus, it's more limited than what you can do with graphics, since you'll probably need to run graphics into it from an external computer. I still love the A10 Mini Pro, but I think both of these are useful in very different scenarios. So what kind of things do I think this is the most useful for? Well, out of the box, it really has everything you need to start live streaming. So it is excellent for people who are just starting out. You don't need to worry about buying a bunch of separate devices like a monitor and a streaming encoder and finding the right cables to connect them all. But also since it can run off its built-in battery, that makes it super portable and something you can use when you're out live streaming on the go. It has a quarter 20 tripod mount on the bottom so you can even attach it on top of your camera and then you have a completely self-contained live streaming solution. Personally, for me, this will probably replace the Sling Studio when I start traveling again and am filming small conferences. It's so portable and easy to pack up in a bag, and it will really cut down the amount of gear and wires I need to bring. Normally, I nearly fill a backpack with the Sling Studio, transmitters, power cables, other accessories, so this should trim it down nicely. So these are my first impressions of this little box. I've had this for about a week, and I've been playing around with it, and I think it's a really promising device and I'm looking forward to seeing how they continue to improve it. There were a few small things that were kind of funny about getting it set up for the first time, but they've already shipped a software update for it in the time that I've had this, so I know they're actively working on polishing off some of the rough spots. I've given them a bunch of feedback on this too, so I'm looking forward to seeing future software updates as well. I'm definitely planning on doing more videos about this in the future, both deep dives on specific features, but especially once I've had a chance to use it outside of a studio environment. So let me know in the comments if you have specific questions and I will see if I can answer them in a future video. All right, thanks so much for watching. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks, and I will see you in the next one.